days, you know, they are not at all resilient. Uh, you know, our generation, when we were young, we were like this and we were like that. I don't know whether you've heard this, but, you know, so very clearly it's a very simplistic kind of observation. All of you, my students, you are live in a much, much more competitive and stressful world than I did when I was your age. So how, you know, we as an educational institution, we also put some stress on you, right? We tell you, you know, you have exams or what are your marks? What is your GPA? What is your CGPA? You know, have you done this course? Have you done that? Have you have we give you projects to do. There's so much to do if you want to succeed in this, shall I say, academic arena. And then later on, you, you have to prepare for placements. You need to absorb the kind of skills that you require so that you get a good job. There is always stress, right? The point is some stress is good. It can push you to do your best. So it can be a motivating factor, but prolonged continuous stress is something else. It can burn you out completely. So, you know, when we were planning the sessions for you, when we wanted, you know, how do we empower you during this period when you are comparatively free? You know, we thought, yes, we have done a session for you. We have done a psychometric test. We have done a session for you on goal setting and attainment. Having done that, we said we need to address this particular issue on stress and how to cope with stress. And we have a very experienced facilitator with us today. Ms. Savita Sriram, uh, welcome, ma'am, to be that you're here, and we thank you for taking the time to be with our students in this session. And from this session, I'm sure our students will learn how to or get insights on how to cope with stress, how to you know overcome or deal with failures, how to lead a more balanced, uh, shall I say, mental and physical life. So. I request now our uh, student counselor, Ms. Revati, to introduce our resource person of the day, Ms. Savita Srira. Revati? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Ms. Savita Sriram is a volunteer with Sneha for more than 20 years, and she has helped many people to come out of their distress. She is also a coordinator for youth mental health project conducted by SCARF and Cities Rise. She is a pet lover too. So, um, Savita Sriram, ma'am, we, we welcome you to address our students and uh, take over the session. Thank you so much. Thanks, uh, Dr. Manuel and uh, Ms. Revti. Uh, Revti, that is sweet of you to introduce me as a pet lover. So, <laughs> and um, so, morning, everybody. Um, my name is Savita and I'm here to talk to you. I'm not sure how much justice we will do on talking about how to teach you to deal with the stressors. However, we will talk in detail today for the next 40-45 minutes about um, what contributes to stress, what we think stress is and what it really is. All right. And Let's see what are the contributing factors that we have, some temporary, some maybe part of our lives that we have to deal with. And what could be the best practices to deal with these stressors, right? We all have our strengths and our weaknesses. And uh, sometimes a brief talk like this could help us internally identify where we stand um, Dr. Manuel talked about psychometric tests. That's really interesting that you all had that. It's wonderful to know that um, there is a college that's taking so much trouble. So there are a lot of other factors that could help you to identify where you are, whether you're okay, not okay, when we need help, when we don't need help, when it's okay to feel this way, when it's not okay to feel this way. So that, that's pretty much the agenda today. So we may not really go away with some proper tools of how this is how I'm going to do it, this is how I'm going to do it. However, you'll be empowered to think about what is the best way forward, all right, in coping with stress, all right? Um, we'll try and now it's about 10.40. So we will try and talk for the next 40 minutes, or 45 minutes, and then I'll leave the last five, 10 minutes open for question answers. 
So if somebody has got something to say or somebody has got a question or some clarification, keep note and then uh, we can do this in the last 10 minutes. But ideally in a face to face session, we would be doing this, you know, a lot more interactively, but we are in changing times. So let's also, you know, work, work around that. All right. Okay. So we keep talking about stress, 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 right? Um, stressors, how I'm feeling, like Dr. Manuel was saying, in, in our times, you know, everything is okay. Kids don't seem to have this, that, and all that. So is all stress bad? Is the first question. So the way stress is usually presented, the immediate thing is a negative impact, right? But is all stress bad? It's a question that we all need to think. Stress itself, because you're all engineering students, so you know that. Stress in itself is not bad, correct? One needs a certain amount of stress, a certain amount of push for any movement to happen. That's basic physics for all of us, right? If it wasn't for the stress of actually having to attend today, we wouldn't be ha having some 250 participants sitting on a 10.30 on a Monday morning, correct? Stress leads us to, propels us to perform a lot of activities. So stress is good. Stress on its own is a good word. However, the stress as we commonly refer to otherwise is the one, right, that makes us really upset. It seems to affect us. So we need to identify what that um, uh, it's, not, it's got a caca. So it, 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 we need to all identify our own uh, past Okay. So let us look at for a uh, if somebody please Savita ma'am yeah any problem yeah I think there's a lot of background noise noise from our side yeah Purani I think is not uh, muted Thank you. Great. So, thank you. Um, so, I was saying that the it's important for us to understand when good stress becomes bad stress as the stress that we know. Okay. Each one of us has our own way of coping, our own strengths, our own weaknesses. The, it's important for us to take cognizance of that before we brand anything as a stressor. This is stressing me out, that is stressing me out. So understanding the, the base behind all this sometimes helps us cope with what is being presented in front of us. For example, something very basic, you know, like uh, the, the study and the assignments that you all have to do, which is a daily thing. Of course, like uh, Dr. Uh, uh, you know, uh, um, she, she was saying, Dr. Manuel was saying, um, it is the college's work, it is part of the job to make sure that you all uh, you know, perform. So therefore, there may be some stressors that come from that side. Now that's a constant, you come to study, we need to study, there is a certain amount of performance that is expected from all of us in all the roles that we play. The role of a student that you are playing right now in the college. There will be some of you who will just goof off, you know, have fun, sit in the last minute, study, and then go ahead and do well. Now, there will be some of us who may have to work through the SEM do everything right, study every day, study every week for us to go and write that exam, right? It could be perceived that some people are having a lot of fun and then they just go ahead and sail through their lives and they're lucky ones and some of them have to work hard. 
Remember, it's a perception. It's just that these two people handle stress differently. Some of them need that stress of the tomorrow morning exam to perform. And that strain tomorrow morning exam can become a huge stressor that does not allow the other person to write the exam. Well, they need the time. So it finally boils down to each of us having different capacities to handle stress. And there's no good or bad here, remember. There is no, it doesn't mean that the person who studied in the last minute is a lot more intelligent or a lot more smarter than the other one, or that the person who studied through the uh, semester is a lot more organized and a lot more calmer and, and, a, and a lot more focused than this one. No, it just means that there are two different individuals being able to handle their stressors differently. This, I believe, is a very important takeaway for all of us. As youngsters who are at the you know launch pad of your lives, pretty soon you'll be going out of college and you will be surrounded by the real society where there are so many things that you are going to have to deal with. So for us to know our strengths and weaknesses is very important. So there's something on the side that I want you to say. How we are going to identify them, we will see them towards the end of the session. All right? Okay. So stress becomes bad when I am not able to handle it. Some of you in the group may be sports people, you may be sportsmen, sports girls, sports boys, you may be gymnasts, you may be doing a lot of uh, stuff, right? All of you who are short-term runners, who, who have a game to play, who are good at some games that you guys are probably part of the team, will know that just before a big game, or just before a short burst of a 100-meter run, you know, you will have palpitation and your hands will be sweating and you're waiting for the start, uh, you know, whistle so that you can run. Heart is beating, you're sweating, there's a certain amount of uh, excitement and adrenaline that's kicked in, waiting for you to push. Go back to think about an exam that you're not prepared for or something that you really dread doing. I can tell you I used to dread math and I still do. And I know how I felt when before a math exam. Okay, same sweating, same palpitation, waiting for that question paper to come and worrying and worrying and even whatever little you've studied is gone in that stress. Stress that does not help. Stress that helped when I went for the run. Remember, this is the difference. I need to identify when that stress is making me perform better and what are the stress that is not making me perform. And that is the definition of good stress and bad stress in my life. Okay. So look at the factors that affect us. Most times in a college or in an educational environment, one tends to think that education is a huge stressor. Okay. No doubt. The need to perform, the need to conform, the need to, uh, you know, rise up to the expectation of the education that is presented in front of me is a stressor. I'm not saying no. But are there not many other factors? All of us are not islands. We have several things around us. We live in a society. We live in a certain type of environment in the society. We are surrounded by certain types of people. We are certain, surrounded by certain types of friends, a certain educational environment. We have a certain social status in terms of socioeconomic status that we all come from differently, correct? And we are all internally made differently. Each one of us is wired differently internally, right? Savita, ma'am. Little yes. louder, little louder and clear. Yeah. Oh, I, are you not able to hear me? Yeah, we are able to, but little more uh, clarity. Oh, I don't know how that's going to be possible. I'm talking as I am, but let okay. me see. I don't know. Yeah, now it's clear. Now it's clear. I think you are a little bit away from the mic. All right. Thank you, oh. Ray. But 
how was i audible all this while or did i students are you able to hear ma'am yes ma'am yes audible yes ma'am okay. oh, okay. okay thank you so so we were talking devti we were talking about um, we were talking about the factors that surround us okay we we all are surrounded by different environments different social pressures we come from different socio economic levels we come from different education backgrounds we all have our own unique individual families and relationships and we are all wired differently inside not one of us is wired the same way as the other which is why when the same presentation of the society comes each one of us reacts differently all our reactions are based on our influences we call them biopsychosocial factors okay biological factors social factors environmental factors psychological factors all of them brand or are contributors to the way we react to every situation so let's look since we are talking today about stress that is not healthy for us let's quickly talk about what all could be the different types of stressors that could make me kind of feeling inadequate and not be able to handle my situation if when we look at environmental factors we are talking about you know what's happening around me it could just be some happening on the newspapers that is affecting me something that makes me feel helpless we are talking about family we are talking about the family setup the framework okay all these things what my current mental state is whether i'm eating well whether i'm sleeping well whether i have any physical issues whether i am happy with the course that i'm doing whether i am not happy with the course i'm doing whether i am i like the environment that i'm studying in how badly covid has affected me in my family other has covid touched me personally in terms of my family life whether my family is still financially okay not okay because of covid 100 things 100 things we could go on and at at a personal level my own relationships my relationships with my family my parents my siblings friend my girlfriend teachers even sexual identity all, all these things are all at an individual level contribute immensely to our stress can i could i request everybody to mute yourself please okay so when do you know that you are stressed you know when you stress you've done psychotherapy dear students your your muting button is getting off periodically please ensure it's muted on hey guys today i'm going to share some details about slide ma'am i have told ms purni to mute all the participants and the participants can have their questions for the end of the session so that you will not be able to interact in between okay students yeah yes we are going to hard mute you all thank you yeah okay thank you so uh, we were going back to when do you know that there's something not okay with me many times the problem is that the problem is i don't know can you hear me can everybody hear me yes ma'am okay yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah thank you so the problem is when i do not know when i'm stressed because usually when i'm in pain the common thing is i will go and take help correct my throat is hurting i tell somebody in the family hey look my throat is hurting and i go and so i see a doctor i go and take some meds or my mom gives me a med or something like that i go and to the doctor right 
But the problem is when I don't know how I'm feeling and whether the way I'm feeling is okay or not okay, that many times I don't take help, right? And like, I, I'd like to go back to what Dr. Manuel spoke about. I thought that was very telling, Dr. Manuel, in the morning when you started the session by saying, look, you'd, you'd have heard many people say at our times, I include myself, you know, so when, um, you know, our people our age would probably be constantly telling you, we never faced all these things. We never, and we were just asked to do stuff and we did it and all these requirements and all these needs and you're feeling not okay and all this, what is all this? You all don't know how to handle your life kind of thing. Keeps getting thrown back at you all the time. Part of the problem is as an evolving society, right? There is a lot more sentiment and uh, a lot more respect for the feelings that um, you know youngsters are given because of the changing fabric of our society the changing socio-economic status of our society so many factors are there and youngsters are more uh, exposed youngsters are more um, you know uh, are starting to earn money much at a much younger age than before getting more socially empowered more economically empowered and therefore, an average 19 to 22 year old is generally an adult today, whereas probably long back it wasn't that way still, right? That could be one of the factors. So to, to be acknowledged by my family for who I am could be a challenge for me. So many times if my mom says, what stress? I didn't even know the word stress until I was 30 years old. One tends to just keep quiet probably and say, okay, maybe that's the way it should be because I, li I like my mom and my mom is saying that and she can't be very wrong, right? It's a typical response that we could get. I'm feeling terrible inside, but I don't know how to talk about it because it's not okay for a young kid to feel this way. Okay. So, uh, Revti, maybe you can just put a full mute for everybody so that nobody can unmute themselves. I think you must be having a way of doing that so that it doesn't, uh, somebody doesn't unmute by mistake. And so there are times that I could be feeling like I'm crying all the time for no reason at all. I get up in the morning feeling low. I get up in the morning, I'm not able to eat. I'm not able to sleep. I'm not able to concentrate on my assignments, you know? I'm constantly biting everybody's head off in irritation. I don't want to talk. I don't want to be talked to. Somebody at home talks to me. A friend wants to call me. I cut the conversation, right? I feel nauseous. I feel like I want to bite my nails all the time. Okay. I have headaches, all sorts of headaches and this ache and that ache. And at the slightest provocation, I want to shut myself off and go and sit inside a separate room if it's possible for me to do. Otherwise, I just walk out of the house, I storm out. I don't want to get into a conversation with anybody. I seek isolation and I'm constantly feeling lonely that nobody understands what I'm going through. I'm talking about the kind of feelings that one who's stressed can be going through. The strong sense of helplessness and hopelessness over my situation could be leading me to do this way. And remember, we talked about so many stressors. It's kind of hard to identify a single reason that could be stressing me out. For example, I may just not be doing okay in class for a variety of reasons. COVID has not helped. And, you know, things have been different. And I mean, we are doing a session on stress online. So, you know, things have changed. Well, you should, I, I would really, you would, your college would have asked for a session face to face, right? And we all have practical issues, connectivity issues. We have privacy issues. We need to be able to sometimes sit at home in an environment where several people are working online at the same time and be able to have the privacy to give for what my college needs. I need time. I'm not able to go out into the college and work. Maybe college has started now, but it's been a hard year 
and that itself being cooped up at home during COVID without having to being able to step out, being able to come to college, being able to have the camaraderie that you have with your classmates and at the college environment could all be great stressors. Being cooped up with family, especially if you're at a situation where you don't have a great relationship with everybody at home, and it was good for all of you to just do your own thing, but now everybody is cooped up in a geographically small place. Some people are not doing so well at work. Some people are having financial problems because of loss of job, loss of profits, all sorts of things. And as much as family tries to keep it away from you or not, it is a fact that all of us feel the pressure. You feel the tension at home. You feel the pressure. You feel the electric tension at home, right? And relationships. There are a lot of relationships that have not gone well because of the gaps in communication. And then there's times off, then you come back together. Relationships have changed. Friendships have changed. People move on. People get compared. All sorts of things happen. And then it's hard for us to say, why am I feeling this way? Is it because of this? Is it because of that? Is it because of this? Because if you sit back and think, you could actually identify a hundred stressors in your life. And this, I think, is a very important thing because it means that I can sit back and respect my feelings. That is the first thing that we all need to do, to acknowledge every small feeling that I'm going through. Yes, I'm feeling this way. Yes, I'm feeling sad for no reason at all. Yeah, maybe, but I'm feeling sad. I feel like crying. I don't feel like getting up. I don't feel like doing anything. I'm constantly being yelled at. I'm constantly being judged. I'm constantly feeling that I'm not good enough are all real feelings that I have that one needs to first acknowledge. I have a right to feel this way and I am feeling this way are two things that are very important for us in coping with stress. As long as I don't accept and acknowledge the way I feel, I'll never be able to really cope with it well. Pushing my emotion and feelings and the way I feel under the carpet is only going to gather a lot of dust which is going to come and erupt on my face after some time in a very big way, okay? So let's, as a first step towards coping with stress, do this. Acknowledge that I'm not feeling okay. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to tell you that you are not feeling okay, okay? Your mom and dad or your family or your friends will be saying, why are you like this? Why, what is wrong with you that you have to look like this? What is wrong with you that you have to behave like this? You don't talk anymore. You don't laugh anymore. And you know, others don't have to say, you know, you're not feeling okay. You're the best judge of who you are. You're constantly biting nails. You're feeling constantly anxious, helpless, hopeless, sometimes desperate and wondering what my life is happening. What is happening with my life? What am I going to do? The future looks scary. I don't know what I've been doing. And all these questions, Usually, with a student, all culminates and comes up at the question of education. And it shows in my education. Maybe because what is expected from a student is to perform as a student. Maybe that is why your results and the way you are as a student is showcased. Okay? But I want you all to understand that in my experience, I've seen that the pressure of the education is only a very small part. The pressure comes from so many other areas. We all need to identify them. Right? I say this again and again because it's a very important part of coping with your stress. All right? Right. So now I know uh -huh, that I'm stressed. And we all cope with stress being survivors and human beings as we are. We all cope in different ways. Some of us sleep, some of us eat sweets, some of us jog, some of us go for a run, go to the gym, work out until you fall flat on your face, right? Go and take a long run to the beach, go walk, uh, run around in your college if you have a ground. 
physical exercises. Some of us just take, get it out by physical exercises. Some of us listen to music, some of us sing, some of us dance, some of us play music, uh, musical instruments. Distressors. Some of us, like pets, some of us talk to our dog, to our cat, to our fish, right? Some of us, if COVID permits, go to the beach, sit, look at the water, supposed to be a great de-stressors, right? External de-stressors, there are so many, some of us go to religious places of worship, some of us listen to religious music, some of us go to church and ring and sing along with the choir or go on a Sunday mass, some of us go to the mosque, some of us go to temples, sing bhajans at home, whatever works. Many of us cope differently. Some of us just sit, get together and talk with friends, if it's possible, still. If you're still able to meet out and hang out, you still try and do that. Have a cup of tea together, go to the local tea shop, split a tea, split a, uh, split a samosa, have fun. Okay? Some of us talk to people whom we are comfortable could be families, siblings, friends, cousins, neighbors, classmates, college counselor, whoever. Somebody, everybody needs somebody. Some of us do that. So these are all some types of coping that we do. Some other types of coping that people do when they're very stressed. Sometimes you have a drink, sometimes you smoke, sometimes if there is substance abuse in the sense of use of substance for example cannabis whatever is available people use or have a smoke at home or if you're allowed uh, if your group of friends are used to smoking together you feel very stressed you have another cigarette some people who drink have an extra drink when they are very stressed and say the drink calms me down some others would cope by hurting themselves I could just get so angry with myself on my helplessness and my situation or angry with the other person that I'm not able to do anything that I would just scream and shut myself from the room and scream my head off or I slap myself in front of the mirror or sometimes scratch myself with nails or use a pen and scratch myself or cut myself with blade either on the wrist, arms just because the deep pain that I feel when I harm myself actually helps me cope. It helps me cope with my pain temporarily. We call this a kind of behavior that's called self-harming behavior. Many people, youngsters, start it in their teenage age and some of us carry it on a little later into the, and more, many people just let it go after some time. You know, it just, they move on with other coping mechanisms. However, it has been found to be a coping mechanism with youngsters very often. I just want to say one thing. I'm not here to judge or I don't even, in fact, nobody except probably your family or your college would want to even step in to talk about the right or wrong of this. But all I want to say is that if you are coping with use of substance or you're coping with use of pain, Anybody who's had an experience with this will know that it does not work. If you have one drink and you feel better, the next time you're stressed, you need more than one drink. If you've smoked once and then you were stressed and you want to smoke again, you will see that the two puffs is not enough and three is necessary. If you've used cannabis, you will know that the increase of the use of the substance keeps going up for you to feel relieved the same way you did earlier. You got me? So it's a very clear pattern when you need to do things more for you to feel better. What was one so half a cigarette would become one cigarette, two cigarettes, three cigarettes. Quarter, you know, you have a small, you have a big small, and then you have a big large or whatever it is. And it's the same thing with the substance. And it's the same thing with self-harm as well. If I had just had to pinch myself and I had to just poke myself once, later on would become a cut for me to feel better. The physical pain needs to be harder for me to feel better inside. And you all know that that doesn't work. 
there are two bad fallouts or unhealthy fallouts out of this kind of a coping mechanism. One is that, like I already said, your body is getting obviously harmed more and more and more often. And the coping is not happening properly. A. So they, the reason why you set out to do this is not, is not working and it's very temporary. The second one is you would have learned an unhealthy coping which does not allow you to explore healthy coping mechanisms because it worked for you temporarily and therefore you say it worked for me, nobody else need to care. I hurt myself, I scream, I scratch, I get okay, who are you to talk about it? Sure, I agree. But what will happen is with that you have stopped exploring options that would otherwise help you feel better. Right? So this is why we call such coping strategies unhealthy coping strategies. We do not for a moment disagree and say that this is not a coping mechanism. It does help you cope, no doubt. It is a coping mechanism. However, it is not a healthy coping mechanism. So each one of us, like I initially said, we have different levels of stress. We are all wired differently. And therefore, we would all choose different coping mechanisms. Now, neither I or anybody else actually can ever tell you what is the right coping mechanism for you, your young adults. But one thing I can tell you, choose a coping mechanism for your anger, for your helplessness, for your um, be, you know, a uh, sense of uh, desperation or whatever it is you're feeling. Choose a mechanism that does not harm you or harm others around you. It's a very important way of doing this. Okay? So, we all need to choose a, a coping mechanism that helps us cope by not hurting ourselves and not hurting others. Some of us, sometimes when you're in deep anger and you're very hurt, you just shut off. You just shut off and go and sit in a corner and not talk about it at all. That's not good either, right? You put a lid on the pressure cooker and put a weight on it and you never take it out and it's going to burst. It's good for you not to scream out in anger, but it's important that you talk about your feelings later. So, so Savita, ma'am, I'm going to just disturb you for a minute because sure. somebody's video is on Tejashwini Malikarna yes. Kukeri. Your video yes. is on and that's disturbing everybody. Please yeah. switch off your video. Whoever is accessing through Tejashwini, please switch off your video. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I, I wasn't sure if I should interrupt, so, <laughs> so, right. So, we were talking about how important it is, okay, to choose the kind of coping that works for me in a healthy way. You will be the best judge. So, we talked about a lot of external coping mechanisms, and these could probably help you with a temporary stress, for example, like I had a big fight or I did really badly in something. And there was a lot of people laughing at me or somebody was telling me, why couldn't you do your homework and come here properly? This is a group study or something. Or at home, suddenly you're going through a phase that nothing is going right. And whatever you do is not going down well with your family and everybody's unhappy with you. Temporary situations that create a lot of stress. And then sometimes doing all these external activities that we talked about could help you cope. But some of us live with some stressors that are constant, correct? For example, I may have, um, you know, a situation um, at home, maybe, that is a constant stressor. Maybe it bothers me. Maybe the, the way my family set up is, bothers me all the time, but it is a constant. The Maybe the way I feel about myself, about the way I look, the way I talk, the way I dress, 
is something that I'm just not able to get over it. You know, I'm just not able to get over the way I'm looking, the way I'm feeling because of that, the way I'm dressing, that I can see that I'm slightly different. Maybe I'm grappling with a sexual identity that is putting tremendous amount of stress on me. Or I'm going through a relationship with somebody which is putting a huge amount of stress on me. Don't know how this relationship is going. It's been there for a long time. We are having constant fights. We are sometimes having cold wars and then we are getting back together. Then we are splitting up again constantly. And these are all major stressors that I'm living with. There will be some stressors like this in each of our lives that are we call constant stressors. That as we go through our student life and as we get out also, these stressors are going to stay with us. Right? So I can't wish this away because this is my life. This is my home. This is my family. These are my relationships. So I can't just walk away from this. And they are there. And I'm going to have to deal with them. It's very important for us to look at our own internal coping mechanisms to deal with stressors that are fairly stuck with us for a long time. So what is it that I can do? What do I call when I say internal coping mechanisms? What is it that I can say? One of the first things in an internal coping mechanism is accept the situation. I first have to accept that this is what is happening. This is, this is the way I look. This is the way I'm going to look. I'm never going to become different. I'm not, my skin is never going to become different. My hair is never going to become different. I'm just going to be stuck with this pimply face for a very long time. Eventually it could change, okay? My shape is this, right? I can work on it to be healthy, but I know that I carry genes. That is only so much. My performance, another thing. How much ever I hard I try in this subject this is all I'm going to do. Accept that I have my strengths, I have my weaknesses. Well, many of us are able to very quickly see our weaknesses and have a lot of pressure on ourselves and our self-esteem. We are not able to see our strengths. What I am good at? What makes me happy? What are the things that I do well? are all things that I have to look at myself. Take help in talking to people about it, all right? We need to take help in talking to people about what you are good at. What makes others happy about me? Somebody is telling me X is a, such a nice girl, such a nice boy, always helping. Sure, it's a good thing about me, all right? I may be abysmal in some subject, in my marks. I may just be an average student. But you know what? It takes all sorts of all of us to make the world. And we all have a place in the world. And it is our spot. And nobody can take it away from us. I need to first acknowledge that. Right? For the longest time, you know, I'm past your age and I'm really elderly. But for the longest time, you know, I couldn't say. There were a lot of things that I wanted to do that I definitely could not do. I wanted to run a 22 kilometer marathon. Okay. My body just did not allow me to do. And there were people my age who were breezing it through and passing it and doing it in half the time when I was trundling along. I just couldn't do it. And people will say, of course you can do it. Of course, what's wrong with you? You can do it. But I couldn't do it. Okay. I just can't drive a two wheeler for all the money in the world. And it can be a laugh with many people, correct? It all depends on the perspective. And somebody else may say, who the hell cares here? Doesn't matter. As long as you find something that is something that you are happy doing, you will eventually end up doing it well. So sometimes internal coping is about accepting my strengths and my weaknesses. Accepting that there are some things that I'm not going to be very good at. That's okay. I will just somehow handle them and do it because I'm expected to do it to the best of my ability. There are some things that I'm very good at. I never lose sight of that. And be realistic about your expectation. If I've been steadily scoring 40 marks and 50 marks or 55 marks, 
you know in a particular subject or doing so 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 in an assignment okay for me to aspire to do 90 is very good it's an excellent thing to aspire but to be disappointed over it in just a semester is unrealistic because if one has to work towards it in steps right if 40 becomes 50 50 becomes 70 and 70 becomes 80 is a great thing but to aspire for a 90 and then get 70 and say oh i'm no good i'm no good i'm no good what happens is that you are putting pressure that is unrealistic on you if i weigh 90 kilos and i'm doing a diet program or i'm doing something and working out so i can become a 70 i can't do it overnight i have to work on it right and it takes time and i might want to become 70 but i might still end up being 80 but don't lose sight of the fact that you lost 10 kilos right it's very important to acknowledge our small successes it's very important to have the self esteem to say i did this in whatever small measure all right and so that's what i do to do it and after all these things don't ever forget to take help taking help what does this mean what does taking help mean? What is somebody who's on the outside ever going to do for my feelings, for my problem? How is somebody going to help me if I'm going to have a bad situation at home with my family? How is anybody else going to help me on my fight with my boyfriend or my girlfriend? All right? There's a question somebody may say and just close up. But remember, external help and somebody to hold on to with whom you are comfortable is a way of holding for support when you are not at your best. It's no different from holding on to support when you're feeling a little dizzy. Well, the support doesn't do anything to make you feel better or your dizziness is not going to come down because of the support. All the support does is hold your body while your body kind of comes to an equilibrium and the dizziness goes away. The dizziness goes away with your coping on your body. No, but the, 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 whole, the support on the side is not doing anything. It's simply being there so that you can hold on to it. And that is what all external support in terms of talking can do. Talk, speak, share. Don't ever undermine the importance of talking and speaking. Who do I talk to? I talk to somebody whom I'm comfortable with, whom I feel will hold my confidence. You have student counselors in your college that you can speak out to about your problems and take help. And if you want anonymity and you want confidentiality for some things that you don't want anybody you are familiar to know, there are several helplines that could help you. Okay. At the end of the show, we were this session. We will be putting up some numbers and uh, I'm sure, um, uh, you know, your college will circulate the numbers to all of you. Um, there are several youth resources that are available that you can reach out to. There is this warm line, which is not a crisis line. It's called a warm line for youngsters to reach out to and talk about whatever is bothering them in total anonymity and confidentiality. If you feel that you are a friend or somebody you know is in some sort of crisis, desperate, very depressed, not knowing what to do, not eating, not sleeping, completely isolated, and you think this person needs help, do not hesitate, okay, to reach out to your student counselors or any of these helplines to talk to them about it. And remember, for all of you, you know, coming from a good place like the college that you are in, which is giving you so much of support, medical help is always available when recommended. Sometimes some of us would just benefit from a little bit of counseling, a little bit of therapy, a little bit of medical or professional, inter, you know, uh, help to get us along. If I have fever that's not going away, I go to a doctor and he gives me some meds and I get better, right? Although somebody might say, just take rest and you're going to be okay. Sure, you might. But what you'll do in 10 days with the help of a dollar 650, you would do in three days. Correct? So let's respect that medical help 
does help us sometimes. And the best person to guide you for all this would be your student counselor, these helplines that you can talk to. Take help, okay? I always say this, none of us is too weak or too strong. When we need help, we take help. And that is the situation. Let's not judge our situations by saying, oh, should I go to somebody just because I have this thought? If it is a thought that worries me, it means it's worrying me. It means if there is help available with the thought, I should take it. Common sense. So let's do that. All right. So um, I'm going to do this was a really brief session. So I just tried to do what I could with this. Um, I'm, I have another five, ten minutes, I think. Right, Revti? And uh, if there is anybody who would like to ask questions or say something or contribute to what I said, please, I'm happy to share. Please do. If any of you has a question, please unmute and, uh, you know, you could ask me what you want. But if you want to say something or share something, if any of you boys and girls want to say something to me, if you felt, hey, you know what, ma'am, this is a problem that you didn't never talked about. Let me know. Because we so all learn. I, I uh, displayed the uh, helplines. Were you able to view that? Yes. While ma'am was talking, I just displayed the helplines. Were you able to view it? You can put it back, Revdi. Yeah, right. yeah. No, it was visible, Revdi. Yeah, yeah, okay, ma'am. I think they've hard muted them. They may not have been able to answer it. Okay, ma'am. So I think uh, the students can be unmuted, ma'am, so that they, if they have any queries, they can uh, talk. You can either ask or you can put it in the chat box, either yeah. which way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you guys can go ahead and put it in the chat, uh, chat box as well. Or if you want to tell uh, Revti if that's more comfortable for any of you, and for her to read it out, that's fine for me too. Whatever suits any of you. If there's anything that I can help or clarify, I'm happy to do that. Or if you all feel that you don't want to say it now, but you want to ask something, Revti, maybe you can take questions and and share it and we can give you the answers. Yes, what do you want? Because sure. sometimes, some, so, okay, sometimes somebody may not be very comfortable talking uh, and asking about a particular question. But if you have something general, you can ask now. But if you all have anything specific to talk about, you could ask your college, and I'm sure your college will definitely contact us to do. But do talk to these helplines if you all have anything. Because this, the youth warm line especially is something for the ages of 15 to 25, and it is manned by youngsters. It is manned by youngsters sometimes who've gone through something, who've come out, who know what they're saying, who know what it is to be in a bad spot and have come out and be able to help you, okay? And the crisis helpline that we are talking about is Neha, where somebody who's depressed, who's somebody who's feeling helpless and wants to talk in complete anonymity. At Sneha, you won't even be asked for your name, all right? You can just pick up the phone call and, and talk. And if you want to just a good cry with somebody come in total anonymity, you know, uh, Sneha would just listen to you and know that you're going through a difficult time and be there with you while you get better. All right. So choose these numbers and take help and know that stress can be coped with. Stress will always be there. It's just that our circumstances will change. You know, talk talk to all your teachers, talk to Revti, talk to uh, Dr. Manuel, Dr. Amrita, talk to everybody. And they'll all tell you that they all have their own stress source. It's just that I have my own stress source. Your family will have your stress source. Your friends will have stress source. All of us deal with stress because when you when you have an environment with 10, 20 people thrown in, there has got to be stress source. Some stress source will be there. How you allow it to influence you is what we are talking about here. Stress will influence you sometimes in a bad way, but knowing that there is some way I can cope will more often than not allow us to beat it and live with it sometimes. Right?
guys no questions could mean that i made no sense to you or i made a lot of sense to you not sure which one is true silence mom yes mom you said like uh, if i mean if there is help go seek it so one yeah. that make us more relying on the help mom like want it make us more uh, i mean it will make us expect more mom i mean if there's a problem next time we we would be expecting a uh, help from someone else right okay. is that wrong do you think it's wrong yes mom we are supposed okay. to be more self dependent right okay it's extremely good to be self dependent and i think it's an admirable quality to be self dependent but the very fact that you feel helpless in a situation means that maybe the situation calls for something more than self dependence correct for example supposing um in a very basic situation um like let's say you're doing an assignment right on something and you had all the material that was given to you for the assignment and it seems that it's not enough and you need to look for more help right google yes, ma'am you go to google is going to google bad to get more information on how to do the assignment is a question we need to ask right if going to google is not something that i'm not even going to think about because i know it's simply going to empower me more can it not be the same when i'm approaching another human being to help me with something i go to a doctor when i have high fever is it that i'm weak or is it that i need help it is i mean you need help yeah so one of the important things arun is to know that i need help and or that i will benefit from help okay i rather than use the need to say that it will make my journey less tough to benefit from help i am sure you feel that hey you know what with a little more tough toughness and pulling myself up i can handle my life i i have no doubt that it will happen but if there is help available and i could benefit from it and it could make the journey better for me and happier for me is it not a wise choice that we can think about yes it is wise mom but also i mean like uh, it also means we are in a way selfish no mom selfish why do you feel selfish because we seek the help of uh, others but we don't give anything in return like we don't ex- i mean we don't we are not planning to get, give anything in the re- in return but we do expect so, something huh so what kind of uh, return are you looking at the very fact that sometimes when you feel better after talking to somebody is probably the best gift that you would give to the person who's listening back to you so you are giving something back in return your wellness okay yeah remember okay. that there's no need for us to be hard on ourselves all the time the difference between feeling strong and being hard on yourself right you can push yourself to do well i think it's a great quality it's a great quality but to know when that stress is bothering me is to be wise and take care of that in whichever way you find comfortable we talked about trying to sort out our stressors by ourselves right going to the gym singing dancing reading music all sorts of things sometimes we try all this and yet it doesn't work then would it be the intelligent thing if none of this is working and i'm still feeling terrible to do something so that i feel less terrible about myself it's important for me to be the strong person it is important to take help so that i retain my strength if you look at it that way see if it makes sense to you okay yeah, sure sure thank you anybody else
Dr. Manuel, I think uh, <laughs> there are no more questions and we are going to wrap the session up. If no, nobody has put anything into the chat box, I assume. So then shall we okay. wind up? So to Arun, who was, uh, I have to thank Arun for asking the questions that he did. And uh, I do want to tell Arun that, you know, the other thing I would like to add, who knows that maybe when you ask for help and you benefit, maybe you will be able to guide somebody else and tell someone else, look, when I experienced this, I went for help and I benefited. Why don't you also go for help? So that could be the way you give back. So there is a satisfaction for the helper who helped to because it gives a definite, you know, it's not only the person who's helped who benefits. Definitely, if I'm able to help someone, I gain a lot from that. You know, there's a great sense of satisfaction and well-being for me. And I'm sure, Arun, if you help somebody else, you feel that, you know, oh, you feel wonderful that you are able to help someone. So when you seek help, don't think that is just you benefiting the person who's giving the help. You're you are contributing to their you know, well-being and feeling. And the other thing is that you can help somebody say, you can tell someone, I benefited, I'm telling you from my experience, so please do seek help. And I want to thank Savita for that wonderful, wonderful session. Sure. It was very great. And I'm sure our students really benefited from listening to you on what we have the, you know, the unhealthy coping mechanisms, What, but they are coping. But so when Arun asked about self-reliance, yes, it's a great, thing to be self-reliant but you know uh, when it's wrong to be not self-reliant would be when you are you know using the coping mechanisms which may be in the long run harmful for you so as Savita ma'am has pointed out please do look for more healthier coping mechanisms like uh, she mentioned so many singing dancing talking to friends hanging out friends from all of them and if you feel they that is not helpful as Savita ma'am said please do seek professional you know you can go to our student counselor you can go to you can come to me you can talk to any of the teachers on campus whoever you're comfortable with you can talk to them you can talk to family members so sometimes you know sometimes when we love our children so much we may not be able to be you know objective we may be more emotionally involved which is why sometimes you may feel that oh my you know my mom doesn't understand or my dad doesn't understand it's not because they don't love you it's because they love you so much that you know they are not able to take a step back and look at the situation so it may be helpful for you to talk to others, other adults, anybody whom you trust. And she has, uh, Savita Mama shared you the, you know, the phone lines which are available for you. There is YouTube that if you want to talk to youngsters. There is Neha if you want to talk to somebody, you know, an adult who's or a professional. So those helplines are also available for you. So never ever think you're weak. Never ever think there's any stigma attached. Just as you would like to, you go to a doctor when you're sick or you would take medicines when you're physically sick. This is as simple as that. There's nothing else to it. So all of us get stressed, whether we need help, it's up to us to decide and just seek that help the same way that you would seek help when you fall physically sick, right? It's as simple as that, nothing Absolutely. else to it. So I think that's it, yeah. And never think you're alone, just to add. Never ever feel that you are alone. You may feel lonely, but remember there are so many people around you that you can just reach out to. So thank you again, Chalta Ma'am. Thank you so much for thank being with us today. Thank you so much. And thanks, Revati, for the opportunity. Wish you well, kids. And, um, you know, enjoy your semester. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.